Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of Autopilot 8.1-2018-21975 BDBC11. Um, so, people who watched the last video may notice that I lied and said that I wasn't going to do this particular loop again uh, because I was going to start testing on a more challenging section of road. However, I didn't have the opportunity to do that on the last version, so since I've already updated to a new version we need something to compare against, I have to rerun the same section of road using this new version with the intention of I will then post more subsequent videos of a test on a more challenging section of road using this version then we can start testing from that one going forward. So here we enter into the same standard loop. It's actually hugging the uh, inside even better than the last one. And you know, cutting, coming close to the bike lane about the same as the last one was. Let's see, oh there's our new nag screen. Just a light little touch on the wheel and we're good to go. So, in the last video, I was complaining about the lack of features from Tesla, and it seemed like every new version that we were getting was only an incremental change over the last one, or at least even if there were noticeable changes in the autopilot performance and, like, say, how auto steer worked, you know, I was getting a little annoyed at the fact that we hadn't gotten any new features in a while, and, you know, and I'm pleased to say that, at least in this one, we actually are starting to get some quantifiable features that show up in the release notes, so I don't know if I'm going to actually catch up with this car that we can see the adjacent lanes, but now we have adjacent lane display, which is great! Um, that's one that I've been waiting on, I liked having it in my old Autopilot 1 car, and it was a conspicuous absent in my Autopilot 2 car when I got it. Um, you know, I don't know why it took them quite this long to be able to do that. It doesn't seem like that's a really hard one, but, you know, I, I'm not an expert on machine learning or computer vision, so I'm not going to presume to explain to somebody else how easy their job should be based on my own perspective. So I'll go ahead and disengage Autopilot here so I can make the right turn. I apologize for not posting more videos on the previous version. It was my intention to do so, but I was having some work done on my car. Um, specifically, the main thing was I actually got my windows tinted, finally, which is something I've been meaning to do. 30% um, tint all around except for the windshield, which is the legal limit in Colorado, and uh, I don't believe any tint on the windshield is legal in Colorado, or if it is, it's only the, the top 5% of the window, which honestly I don't think looks all that great. But uh, yeah, I got a windows tint and I'm very, very happy with it. Hopefully it also reduce some of the glare on the instrument cluster from the side windows. Uh, but we'll just have to see how the video comes out. Uh, as a result of the window tint though, um, you may notice that the, the rear camera image is gonna come out a little bit differently. This is the first video that I'm recording after getting the window tint. Let's see how we do on the tracks good, no, no G-Sensor beep. Um, this is the first video that I've done since getting the window tint, so we'll have to see how the rear vi uh, camera video comes out. Based on some testing that I had done, I did go ahead and adjust the brightness of the rear camera uh, in hopes of making it look a little bit better, but we'll just have to see. So we'll just go through our standard section here. So one of the other features that was mentioned in the release notes is a new adjustment to tack and presumably by extension also auto steer if you happen to have it engaged, uh, where the car will more intelligently slow down for highway off ramps, which is cool because that sounds like something that would be a great precursor to uh, the ability for the car to automatically navigate highway interchanges and exits, which was a, a long ago promised feature that we've been waiting on. Um, it, it's interesting though, because that's actually something that I've noticed that the car had already done. There are numerous spots where I live where if I go into an on-ramp, the car recognizes the fact that it's on an on-ramp. Oh, it's funny, the autopilot actually did a better job of lane keeping than the guy who's driving in front of us. Um, the car will actually recognize that we're on an on-ramp or on an express lane, and in some instances, it slows down because it sees there's a turn coming. Uh, and then in other instances I've noticed, it'll actually slow down. Let's go ahead and go straight. We'll take that narrow section this time. In other instances, I've seen it actually slow down because it changes the speed limit based on the fact that you were on the off-ramp. Um, so some off-ramps and some express lanes. Uh, it obviously recognizes as different roads. So sometimes it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Good example, in Colorado, the I-25 corridor that runs north and south through Denver has a large express lane that runs either north or south depending on the time of day. It's two lanes wide that you can enter and exit at specific points. When I am on the express lane, uh, the car actually doesn't, re it recognizes that I am on the express lane and adjusts the navigation accordingly. However, it does not recognize the express lane as being a highway, so it doesn't allow me to do automated lane change while I'm in the expressway using auto steer, which is 
kind of weird. Obviously it should. But, you know, that's a, a minor inconvenience. But yeah, I have seen multiple instances in which um, exits off of like Highway 36 that's nearby to here. Uh, once I get onto the exit, uh, the auto steer will actually automatically drop the speed limit down to a different speed limit for the exit, which is also a bit of a testament to how accurate the GPS is on the Tesla. Um, I don't know how many of you guys use the mobile app to find your car in parking lots. For the most part, I tend to remember where I park, but on the rare occasions when I don't have a great memory of exactly where I left my vehicle, uh, and I look at the GPS application, um, I find... Oh, what are you doing, guy? Yeah, good job, car should slow down for that. Um, I find that the GPS is is accurate basically to the parking space that my car is in. It doesn't just sort of show me like generally where the car is in the parking lot. Like I, when I switch it to the satellite image, like it will be down, it'll be in the exact parking space. Well, that was really nice. Wow. It handled that even better than the last time. It kept me far away from the wall, and it's keeping me nowhere near the center line as it was making that right turn. That's for very good performance. I did slow it down to exactly the speed limit, because that's a little bit of a sharp turn with not a lot of margin for error with that narrow bridge. But, but yeah, as I was saying, uh, the GPS and the Tesla appears to be very accurate. I mean, obviously, there are always going to be mitigating factors. I mean, tall buildings in large cities are, are going to have an impact on that, but... You know, having a highly accurate GPS is probably something that's going to be pretty important once it starts getting in full self-driving. So here we're approaching a stopped car, slowing down way ahead. And not like in a bad way necessarily. Like this, it starts slowing earlier than I would start slowing if I were the one in direct control. However, um, it's it's not slowing down in a fashion that I would say would annoy a driver behind you because they'd be wondering what the heck you're doing. That car's nowhere near you. Which is exactly the sort of behavior that I would want from an autopilot system or full self-driving type system. So as I'm passing a car, interesting. So oncoming traffic does not appear in the adjacent lane display, which is kind of what I would expect. You know, we don't see icons for the cars representing them traveling in the opposite direction. We only see them, you know, traveling approximately in the same direction with slight turning angles. So it's always, it always seemed like a feature that was intended to display cars from the rear to just give you an idea of traffic that's around you as you're going with the flow of that traffic. Yeah, it's been on auto steer this entire time that I've been rambling on, and well, that's interesting. What happened there? Well, I guess I'm taking over. Hmm. Now that's interesting and unexpected. It got a little confused in that section there. I'm not sure. I guess I'll have to go back and look at the footage later, but I'm not sure where the auto steer got confused. I think it maybe had a little bit of difficulty with the lane lines. It's not usually something that I see. But, you know, it did give us just a nice warning message and said, please take over, which I went ahead and did, and yeah, there was no issue. I like how prevalent the auditory alerts are whenever the car thinks there's anything wrong, even if you're driving uh, and the forward collision warning like comes up. Like, I love that as a feature in a car. I wish more cars had that. So go ahead and turn it back on for this section. And what we'll do is there's a major road coming up here um, after about like about a minute of driving west, which is the direction that we're going in right now. So I will turn back down that road and see if we can get some adjacent lane display for the video. All right, so here we are on a multi-lane road, just waiting for some cars to pop alongside. I see some coming up in the rearview mirror, so we should see them on the adjacent lane display here any moment now. Now, I also I wanted to get us an example of this because this is local road specifically. So the adjacent lanes themselves do not show up on the display here, um, but the cars are showing up as being in the next lane. I can see the two cars, that's interesting. So yeah, so there is a great example of adjacent lane display. Now obviously I don't expect this to be, you know, raw telemetry from what the sensors pick up. This is obviously a, a user-friendly visualization that is not intended to be used as like a heads-up display 
or in any way really inform your driving since nothing's going to show up on that display that shouldn't very obviously be in your field of vision. You absolutely should not be relying on the instrument cluster to know if there are cars around you and ahead of you. Um, that's not getting into like blind spot detection, which honestly I wish Tesla would do a little bit of a better job of. I mean, technically it does have that as a feature, but compared to like far, far less expensive cars that I've driven as rentals as part of my business travels, um, you know, I've been in like Hyundais and stuff where, you know, they've got great blind spot detection that shows up. It's very visible on the mirror. You can see it quite clearly. So you know when there is a car, like even a good 15 feet behind you, like coming up on you. As opposed to the Tesla where, you know, it's not great. Like you have to look at the instrument cluster, which is kind of inconvenient into itself. Um, there's not really an auditory warning unless you're actually about to run into a car. Uh, and what I find that I end up using instead is I just actually use the rear-facing camera. Because if you watch as a car, like this is a car that's passing me on the left. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a camera on the rear-facing camera display. But if I'm driving with the rear-facing camera display on, um, the car, because it's such a wide fish, like fish eye angle, and it's got a very wide field of view, um, as cars are passing through my field of vision, they stay in the view of the rear facing camera all the way until they're basically outside my driver's side or passenger side door. So the rear facing camera basically is my blind spot detection. I don't rely on the Tesla's blind spot detection. Uh, and, you know, and if they make that feature a little bit better at some point in the future, that'd be great. So here our highway performance is great. I can see cars, multiple cars ahead. Actually, I think it's reading that uh, that truck with the um, trailer as being two cars. Yeah, it looks like two cars very close together on the cluster. But yeah, there's our new feature. Um, let's see what happens if I go here and I'm using TAC. Let's follow this lane and see what happens. I don't know if this is one it'll slow down for, but let's give it a shot. That is not slowing down even a little bit, so I'm just going to go ahead and take over there. Yeah, I mean, this one's not a great example of a, an off-ramp that we would necessarily be testing it against. There's no curvature. It just basically follows along with the highway, so that's something we'll have to test in a subsequent video. I'll find some off-ramps that are like good loops or something along those lines, and, and we'll do another test. But for now, I think that's good, and thanks for watching.